What's up, Tech Gang? Stefan here from TechRight. Today we have the Humidity F1 versus the Samsung Galaxy Note 9. Stay tuned. Alright guys, so I know a ton of people in the comments are going to be pissed off about this uh, for whatever reason, but yes, I have a $200 phone versus an $1,100 phone. Now I'm doing this purely for experimental purposes. I really think that $1,100 shouldn't be justified to drop down on a phone. I mean, you can pretty much buy a used car for $1,100, so I definitely am not with the $1,100 price tag. So in this video, I'm going to pretty much show you that you can get a pretty solid device for only only $200 in the budget range. Now, obviously, my budget range goes from the entry level $0 prepaid phone to $250. So that's where I cap out at budget phone. So I'm really, really interested how the Humidity F1 is going to stack up against the Galaxy Note 9. Now, another warning before I state these specifications, I don't want to piss anybody off in any way possible. I know that the Galaxy Note 9 has amazing specifications. It has great cameras, a great display, great pixel density, but I still don't think it's worth $1,100. It is absolutely an insane price tag for a phone like this. So just for a teaser, I'm going to be saying the Humidity F1 is a better buy a uh, hundred times around because I'm saying if you get a $200 phone, the other $900 can go towards something like maybe put away for your kid's college or even take a pretty decent vacation. So let's go ahead and state the specifications. The Humidity F1 has a 6.3 inch 83.7 screen to body ratio, 1080 screen. So this is going to be 1080 by 2340, and it's going to be 19.5 by 9 with a 409 ppi density. Now, obviously, for the Galaxy Note 9, we're going to have a Super AMOLED capacitive touchscreen, 6.4 inches, so a little bit bigger by 0.1 inch, 8.3% screen to body ratio, 1440 by 2960 pixels, 18.5 by 9 ratio, and a 516 ppi density. All right, guys, so as far as the OS on the Humidity F1, we have Android 9.0 straight out of the box. So we have Pi straight out of the box. Compared to the Galaxy Note 9, which only has Android 8.1 out of the box, I have you can upgrade that to Android 9.0. So the Humidity F1 is winning in one way at least, so that's pretty cool. Now next for the chipset, we have the MediaTek Helio P60 versus the Exynos 9810. Yes, the right side, the Galaxy Note 9 is the Exynos version. This is not going to be the Snapdragon version. I believe it was better to put the global version against the Humidity F1 because that is a global version as well. Now for a CPU on the Humidity F1, we have a 4x2GHz Cortex-A73 and a 4x2.0 gigahertz cortex a53 and our gpu is the molly g72 now for its cpu on the galaxy note 9 we have an octa core 4 by 2.7 gigahertz mongoose m3 and a 4 by 1.8 gigahertz cortex a55 and for our gpu we are rocking an adreno 630 in this now, as for the Humidity F1, we have a micro SD card slot up to 256 gigabytes. So we have a dedicated slot for that. For an internal, we have 128 gigabytes of internal storage and 4 gigabytes of RAM. Now, as for our Galaxy Note 9, we can put up to 512 gigabytes as far as micro SD card in this device. And we do have the choice between a 6 or 8 gigabyte of RAM inside the Galaxy Note 9. Now, obviously, much better camera in the Galaxy Note 9, but the Humidity F1 can keep with the Galaxy Note 9. I will do a full review on the camera later this week, but a really, really decent camera. So it can keep up with it in the basic needs such as bokeh effect, taking selfies and other shots like that. Now, what we're going to do is go into a testing phase which is benchmarking and basically opening applications up at the same time and I just want to go ahead and say that I'm still with the $200 phone only because it's $900 less than the Galaxy Note 9 and I don't think it should be ratified uh, for that much of a price. Alright guys, let's go ahead and start the testing. This is probably my favorite part of the videos that I do. We're going to go ahead and open applications at the same time, see which one opens up first, do a time test, and then we are going to finish it off with a benchmark. Again, who do you think is going to win? Humidity F1 can surprise us, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, but yeah, put it in the comments down below, guys. Alright guys, so I'd like to also say before I start this test, I turn off all the animation scales on both these devices, as you can see, window animation transition and animator durations so they're going to be literally no animations during this application opening test all right guys so let's do the antutu benchmark on both these devices in three two one go 
Oh, so that was like exactly at the same time. That was pretty weird right there. Next, let's go to Cameron. Three, two, one, go. Pretty much the same time again. Awesome. Next, we have settings and three, two, one, go. Okay, the Yumiji F1 won right there, actually. Next, we have the calculator in three, two, one, go. Okay, Galaxy Note 9 won. Next, we have Chrome in three, two, one, go. That was exactly the same time right there. Exactly the same time. We're going to be going to Motorola.com at the same time in three, two, one, go. Okay, so the Galaxy Note 9 got it by a few seconds. Next, we have the clock in three, two, one, go. Exactly the same time. Next, we have Helix Jump in three, two, one, go. All right, Galaxy Note 9 booted up first. And last but not least, we have Temper Run 2 in three, two, one, go. Alright guys, so the Galaxy Note 9 won by about 4 seconds right there. Alright guys, so next thing we're going to do is clear out all these applications. So clear everything out. And we're going to do a time test. Alright guys, so our stopwatch is ready. Galaxy Note 9 in 3, 2, 1, go. And 2, 2 benchmark. Good. Camera. Good. Settings. Good. Calculator. Good. Boot page back up. Good. Clock. Good. Helix jump. Good. Temper 2. finish so we got a score of 36.76 seconds on the galaxy note 9 now next we're going to see how the humidity f1 stacks up to the galaxy note 9 everything's cleared out on both devices let's go to clock stopwatch and then three two one go and two two good camera good settings good calculator good chrome good clock good good temper on two Boom. Oh, okay. There we go, Humidity F1. All right, guys, so the Humidity F1 pretty much only got a second over the Galaxy Note 9. That's pretty impressive right there. Good stuff, you Niji. All right, guys. So my last and probably favorite test of all is the Antutu benchmark test. Now, this is going to show us basically some of the scores that we are going to see on both these devices, uh, comparing RAM, GPU, CPU, and other aspects of these devices. So we're going to go ahead and put these head to head and see which one gets a better score. All right, guys. So we're pretty much on the wild card round now, and uh, it's pretty much anyone's game. Definitely tell me who you guys think is going to get the better score in the comments down below. But the Galaxy Note 9 on the right and the Humidity F1 on the left. Let's go ahead and start this off. Alright guys, so it looks like the Galaxy Note 9 uh, beat the Umidigi F1, not surprisingly, obviously a very, very expensive high-end phone, uh, but I think the Umidigi F1, considering everything, did actually pretty well. So as far as the CPU, we got a score of 62,000, defeating 48% of users, which is absolutely insane on a $200 phone. And as far as the CPU on the Galaxy Note 9, we got a score of 83,918, defeating 67% of users. We also got a GPU score of 34,591, defeating 26% of users on the F1, compared to the Galaxy Note 9's GPU of 96,373, defeating 73% of users. Now on to the UX score, we got a score of 36,089, defeating 4 41% of users compared to the score of the Note 9 which got 54,931 defeating 72% of users. And I think the most surprising thing that I've seen so far is the MEM score. We actually got almost 1,300 more than the Galaxy Note 9 on the Yuma DGF1. We got a score of 9,068 defeating 44% of users compared to the Note 9's MEM score of 7,864 defeating 36% of users. So pretty interesting stuff right here. I think that the Yuma DGF1 is still an amazing phone obviously, and got a killer score of 141,000 on the benchmark score for the Antutu benchmark. 
But the winner does go to the Galaxy Note 9. It got over 100000 more than the Humidity DF1. Obviously, it's a $900 of phone. But if you guys are looking for a phone that is under $200, I will be listing a few in the comments and in the description down below. Uh, they are going to be affiliate links, so they do help out the channel. But those are the few phones that I definitely recommend checking out. But yeah, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like down below as well as subscribing. If you guys are not part of the tech gang already, also hit the notification bell if you guys want to be notified every time I do upload a new video. This has been Safan from TechRite. Peace out, tech gang.